Let us pray. Father, we commit this time into your hand again that the Lord, we want to um, look at the scripture, the word of God, that today we're going to start a new uh, journey in this series of Deuteronomy. Lord, help us, O Lord, as we embark into this book, um, that we will be able to receive um, the, the content and uh, also the truth that the Lord you want us to listen and uh, help us, O oh Lord, that uh, with the strength that the Lord, you, uh, faith that the Lord you've given to us, help us to apply all this into our life. Lord, we commit the rest of the time into your hand. Speak to us, O oh Lord, as we sit together as a family, that uh, we'll be able to understand and also to apply your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, today uh, we're going to start a new series on the book of uh, Deuteronomy uh, according to the daily living water that we are uh, using right now as part of our devotion uh, for the discipleship training. Um, so uh, we have finished on the Gospel of John. Now this is, will be the next book. A book not, I will say, Poppy is not that uh, famous or not the favorite book in the Bible for many of us. Uh, partly because I think Deuteronomy uh, is kind of, if we do not really know what's the importance of it, uh, it will become something like um, a boring book, to be very frank. Why? Uh, because uh, it's a reputation. You see, the law was repeated uh, again by Moses. Um, so sometimes we treat Deuteronomy is like we treat our, uh, our parents or even our grandparents or even uh, our teachers. You know, when they repeat the rules and regulations again and again, we feel very boring. Sometimes we, the way we respond is like, yala, 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 la, I know, la, I know. La. No, um, those, this kind of thing, I mean, when we look at the book of Deuteronomy, I hope and I pray that the Holy Spirit will open up ourselves, all of us, uh, that as we come to the Lord with this word, we will not feel boring, but we look at it and I still find the importance of this book. Amen. Well, uh, of course, let me give you some introductions of the, uh, the, the, this, uh, the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, a, a very brief overview. Deuteronomy consists of three great sermons uh, delivered by Moses shortly before uh, his death. Uh, so these sermons were given to Israel while they are waited uh, in the east side of Jordan in the Arabah, uh, following their military triumph over Sihon, the king of Amorites, Og, the king of Bashan. So after that victory at this time, the nation of Israel considered largely of a generation of Israel who were kind of mere children or not even born when Moses gave the law the first time uh, from Mount Sinai. So that three sermons are a review of what God has done for Israel, a review of uh, the law of God and a review of the covenant of God. So Deuteronomy means uh, a second law or the reputation of the law. So in this book, uh, Moses reviewed the law originally given at uh, Mount Sinai uh, and uh, apply it to Israelite life and the land of uh, in the land of Canaan. Uh, so uh, it also contains instruction, uh, exhortation concerning conquest of the land, and also Israel relationship to the inhabitants of the land. So if you look back on the history, you know uh, from the even from this, the beginning of Deuteronomy, you see from verse 1 to verse 6, uh, it just give us a view of uh, to mention about what's happened after the nation. The Israelites left Egypt, uh, so they marched on to Mount Sinai, and then arriving on the 15th day uh, of the third month, uh, you can see this from Exodus chapter 19. And uh, the Lord revealed Himself in power and great glory in Mount Sinai. Also, He delivered the law of Moses 
who deliver it to the people and uh, they accepted the people accepted the terms and con uh, of the covenant and uh, the Jews left Mount Sinai on the 20th day of the second month of the second year uh, after Egypt uh, this is in number chapter 10 so which mean they actually stays at Sinai quite well not quite a year uh, why is, is it so long uh, why is Terry so long there I think the Lord want them to have the law and also to teach them how to worship it was there in Mount Sinai where tabernacle were instructed and uh, the built and the uh, Levite uh, were dedicated set apart to serve the Lord of course uh, God do not want them to be you know just feel satisfied by staying in uh, Mount Sinai they asked them to march on to the land that the Lord had promised to them the land that filled with honey and milk uh, so they march on but somehow you see as they are coming to the land they spy on it they they are afraid uh, they are losing their trust the faith uh, with the Lord uh, only Caleb and Joshua say want to go in but because of their unbelief uh, somehow God had uh, uh, see, so see that they are not ready uh, they are not the one uh, who will inherit the land so the wonders in the uh, desert the wilderness for 40 years so here this just before Moses died and also as they about to approach to take the the promised land after 40 years um, so this law was given to them okay so this is a kind of a brief overview of what you told me why these three great sermons were delivered by Moses what kind of audience uh, are we talking about so with this uh, we're going to start with this uh, first sermon of this series yeah taking from Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1 to verse, verse 18 with the total a community we built together say to a neighbor a community we built together so it wasn't easy for Moses to lead this great nation before he frequently had to solve like problems uh, new problems uh, listen to new complaints uh, complaints about food <laughs> uh, he got to ask them to, to, to a comfort uh, of their camp at Mount Sinai the people resented the hardship uh, to their journey to the promised land yeah, they forgot the distress of their years of severely uh, uh, as a slave in Egypt and even wanted to turn back just because they were uh, looking for better food, uh, uh, meat and vegetable. Uh, so this is uh, the, the group of people that Moses led okay? uh, before he uh, addressed to this new generation. Right? So even you look at it, no wonder Moses got discouraged and cried out to the Lord and he wanted to quit even in Numbers chapter 11. He asked God to take his life. So this is uh, how, uh, I mean, this is uh, Moses' ministry, uh, uh, the community that he uh, lead, was leading. Uh, so now he faced a new one. So God gave him answer uh, of, uh, through his prayer by sending him 70 elders to assist him uh, to manage uh, the affair of the camp. Uh, so you see Moses was a great leader a spiritual giant but even he could not he could do only so much uh, so he had elders organize the nation by thousands hundreds fifties and tens with competent leaders in charge of every uh, division so this created a ch chain of command between Moses and the people so that he didn't have to get involved in every minor dispute he could devote himself talking with the Lord and helping to settle the most important problems of the camp. All right? So this is the lessons that we are going to look at uh, from chapter 1. Uh, a little bit of the background and uh, why it come to the stage where my, uh, Moses not only delivered the second law or the repeat the, the law again, but he dealt with uh, the issue of leadership. 
uh, in first uh, in chapter one. Okay, so let us learn these three lessons together. First is a reality check. Um, so you can see from here, um, from Deuteronomy chapter one verse nine. Let us read from uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter one verse nine. At the time I say to you, you are too heavy a burden for me to carry alone. <laughs> uh, this is a realistic way of looking uh, at the people uh, because at that time, according to Numbers 20, 26, it's about 601,730 people. Uh, those who are 20 years old and above and are ready uh, to be armed to go for battle. Uh, so with calculation, uh, there is about, if you times four, it's about 2.4 million. Uh, surprisingly, people, the Israelites who came up from Egypt, plus some of those people, local people who followed them, uh, when Moses did the first uh, census on the second year, after they came up from Egypt, is uh, 603,550 uh, people. And then also without, uh, not including the women and also the children. So added together is almost the same of a uh, number of people. But in numbers, is clearly stated all those people who left Egypt, none of them survived. Uh, except Caleb and also uh, Joshua. So this new generation, still that number of people, 2.4 million. And uh, Moses, with a reality check on it, uh, he said, you are too heavy a burden for me. Uh, even though Moses, like I mentioned just now, a great leader, a spiritual giant uh, chosen by God, but he still see that it's a burden for him. Right? I think this one, you see the maturity of Moses, how he learned the lessons. If you look at uh, Exodus chapter 18, Exodus chapter 18, verse 13 to verse 17. The next day, Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people, and they stood around him from morning till evening. With his father-in-law saw so all that Moses was doing for uh, the people, he said, what is this you are doing for your people? Why do you alone sit as judge while all these people stand around you from morning till evening? Moses answered him, Because these people come to me to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me, and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's degrees and laws. Moses' father-in-law replied, What are you doing is not good. So here, take Jethro, the father-in-law to tell Moses uh, about his his situation. Uh, Moses didn't do, did uh, didn't do a, a spiritual check on his ministry at that time. He thought uh, he should be the judge and uh, he should be the one who handle everything. Can you imagine at that time? It's only six hundred thousand came to Moses and line up from morning to evening. <laughs> now lining up, uh, I think slowly become a normal thing for us to get into supermarket, to get into whatever shop, as long as the line there, uh, we learn to be patient and wait and wait and wait. You know, uh, not everyone will take it easily about uh, lining up to get things done. Uh, uh, so I, I pass by a lot of uh, even government departments, uh, the tax departments, uh, people are lining up for morning uh, before even the, sh the, the, the buildings, I mean, the doors open. Why? To get things solved. So can you imagine if that kind of thing, you times it. We are talking about just 50 people. Uh, that is already quite frustrated. Uh, uh, but you are talking about 2.4, uh, 600,000. Just take 600,000. Line up. Can you imagine one at a time? One person will take probably 10 minutes or... Uh, uh, faster will be five minutes they talk about something and pray about it and uh, send them oh, send them uh, 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 away uh, can you imagine every day you take five minutes a person how many person can you meet a day to counsel them to to help them 
to judge uh, on their on their issue. So Jethro, uh, the father-in-law, uh, told Moses, "It is not good for what you are doing. Uh, it's not good at all." Uh, uh, that that because Moses didn't ch- do the reality check, that actually he cannot handle the situation. Look at Acts chapter six, verse one to verse two. Another incident. Acts chapter six, verse one to verse two. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews. Uh, because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, it, was, it would not be right for us to neglect the mystery of the word of God in order to wait on table. So, they, uh, spiritual check. You look at the situation, both Deuteronomy, Exodus and Acts, all because a big number. When the people are increasing, when you're dealing with a big group of people, uh, we need to do a spiritual check, a reality check. And I am doing it. I was doing it all this while. That's why uh, this discipleship training will come in. Uh, uh, I cannot do it alone. None of us can do it alone. People say conservatively, uh, whereby one pastor can, can only remember 200 people's names. I'm not quite sure whether I can remember uh, 200 people's names or not. Uh, it is for it was for for Moses. It was a burden for him uh, to to look after that 600,000. Just talking about men uh, 20 years old and above, and uh, not to count those of women, the, the children. So this is a reality check Moses need to do uh, for him to deliver the laws to them and not just a big number he also he was also dealing with a group of new generation a generation uh, most likely they did not listen to the whole set of the law so before moses died he delivered this law so that they this new generation can listen to the law and go in to the promised land uh, to learn how to live with the inhabitants in the land and uh, continue to worship the Lord. Okay, but as Moses did this reality check on himself, he kn- he kn- he know, uh, he knew that he cannot uh, uh, carry that. Uh, well, at least that six hundred thousand. So I think he learned from the lessons uh, that from his father-in-law. We always use that uh, Jethro uh, kind of. The advice for the cell group structure uh, because we also need to apply this check to us today uh, are we in a stage like we are good or there is a lot of people waiting on the line or there's a dispute just over food or <laughs> if we don't do this reality check uh, we will have problem okay? if I don't do it uh, and we, I don't admit that is the situation we are in right now. We will have a problem. So as Moses did that, I believe it also served as a, a, a lessons to all of us, not just about the church. I can I encourage you to use this as well for your company. Uh, those who are doing business. You own a company, you should do the reality check, especially after this MCO, after this pandemic. Uh, the reality check must come in first before we want to uh, uh, continue on. Before the Israelite march into the promised land, Moses did that uh, reality check. For you, you must, you might have your own method, but when I encourage you to come to the Lord, uh, do this reality check on you and on your organization. Amen. Second point is uh, a possible danger. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 10 to verse 13. The Lord your God has increased your numbers so that today you are as many as the star in the sky. May the Lord the God of your fathers increase you a thousand times 
and bless you as He promised. But how can I bear your problems and your burdens and your disputes all by myself? Choose some wise understanding and respected man from each of your tribes, and I will set them over you. I will set them over you. So this is the danger that uh, Moses anticipated uh, because he see the increase of the numbers, how that of their problems, uh, uh, the burdens of the dispute, I will say almost the same as the first time, the danger that he had during, you no, know, remember Exodus chapter 18 between him and the father-in-law. Exodus chapter 18, you and these people who come to you will only wear yourself out. The Lord is, the work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. The first time, he didn't see that, uh, the possible danger there, simply because he didn't do the reality check. Uh, but this time, you know, in Deuteronomy, as he delivered the law again to the new generation, he knew this is going to happen to them because he experienced it already. Uh, as the increase of the number, somehow uh, that's a problem like uh, will, will kind of will appeal, will appear uh, with the large number of people. Uh, look at Acts chapter 6, verse 1. In those days, when the numbers of disciples were was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in their daily distribution of food. See, when you have increase of number, if it's a small church, small number of people, people are happy. A family church, uh, people know each other. Uh, they don't dare to do anything. This is weird or strange in the church because everyone will know it. When the church grow bigger, uh, the danger, the possible danger will arise. Uh, both physical and spiritual sign. Uh, eggs have deal with food. Uh, Exodus, way before, people have problems. They are lining up to see uh, Moses. You know, can you imagine uh, that kind of uh, waiting uh, for uh, problem to be solved? Uh, even though right now, uh, we are quite used to it for lining up. But here, there's a problem behind how the problem will arise later on will become a danger. Uh, people, pop, pop, the possibility is that their problem not solved, they're getting very frustrated, probably they walk away. Uh, because simply the leaders uh, cannot handle them. Can you imagine that kind of lining up? Uh, how much longer they need to wait? How many days they need to wait until their turns? So, like I said just now, the possible danger we have in the church right now, uh, not to talk about uh, these visions for this year, 2000, I mean 2020, which, uh, you know, many, many years ago, I think a few years back, uh, the church have received this, that they make it as a target to reach 433, uh, to reach 1000 strong on Sunday uh, of attendance, uh, now we are about 700 over. Uh, so that that is, if you include the children, uh, so that is the present situation. We have problems of, from the physical side, parking, classroom, toilet, uh, eventually probably the church building. Uh, we see many some of the places of the church are cracking. Uh, so uh, we are facing that physical kind of possible danger. If we are, if we cannot handle at the present situation with that 700 over, uh, it's pretty hard for us to face that 1000. All right. So we need to see that uh, and how we can anticipate this danger before it's happened. Right, right now, uh, because of this MCO, none of us really anticipated uh, with this present situation. At first, 
uh, we thought it just kind of thing will just pass very soon. But now we have been doing what we call online uh, worship services. The way of uh, coming to the Lord have changed for the last two months. Uh, we worship at home uh, with our family. Some of you probably alone uh, at home. Last week we tried the all holy, the online holy communion. I'm not quite sure how many of you, uh, uh, no, uh, really, uh, miss that holy communion. See, uh, because we don't see that coming, um, that is a danger. But thank God, by God's grace, we still can handle it at this moment. Uh, even like this recording. Uh, we didn't have any fancy gadget with us. Not yet. Uh, we're going to have it. But since MCO uh, happened, we don't have the luxury to really go and do shopping and uh, ask for quotations and, and so on. But we're going to invest uh, so to face what the possible danger in the future. Uh, at this moment, I'm using just my, my phone uh, to record uh, uh, the sermon. Uh, then uh, we we would we need to try our best uh, because uh, we really do not know what how long it's going to last uh, how long it's going to drag on uh, before this MCO lifted uh, before we have vaccine that available I don't think the church will kind of uh, open like before uh, even though the church open how many of us will really have kind of uh, dare uh, to come. Uh, so we got to wait for vaccine. So this is a, the present situation of the, the physical side we are facing. We are doing what we are doing right now to serve our members with the online uh, worship services. It's not what I prefer, but what to do. Uh, it's happened. So it's a lesson for us today as we want to anticipate this, both the physical side and also the spiritual side. If you're talking about spiritual side, uh, how many of our leaders uh, right now in the pool of leaders that we are, are, are available uh, for us to handle the ministry? We thank God we have a group of faithful uh, leaders who are now looking after the DD groups. Uh, that is how uh, for the last two months they use Zoom, they use other uh, ways of reaching out to their members. I, I'm so thankful for that uh, because uh, at least we are handling, the, we are facing the danger with a sufficient, uh, what we call, uh, resources uh, that we have to to overcome it, okay? But it will be a possible danger if we don't anticipate right now. So uh, Moses saw it. It's time for us to also to see it as well. Uh, that is where we want to prepare ourselves to receive the revival from the Lord. If there's a big harvest going to send by the Lord after all this, that we need to get many of us ready uh, for 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 to to face that that situation. If we fail to do that, that will be a danger. Uh, that will be a dispute. Uh, the ministry will be jeopardized because of that. So we need to see that before it happened. Uh, this is how uh, the church must come together and uh, to to face these problems or face this possible danger together. Amen. Last, a uh, shared leadership. Okay? Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 13 to verse 18. Choose some wise, understanding, respected men from each of your tribes, and I will set them over you. You answer me. What you propose to do is good. So I took the leading men of your tribes, wise, respected men, and appointed them have, to have authority over you, as commanders of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, 
of tens and as tribal official as I charge your judges at the time. Here, the dispute between your brothers and judge fairly, whether the case is between the brother Israelite or between one of them and an alien. Do not show partiality in judging, here both small and great alike. Do not be afraid of any man, for judgment belongs to the God. Bring me any case too hard for you, and I will hear it. And at the time that I told you, everything you were to do. So here, uh, Moses share his uh, leadership to others. Hey, he appointed uh, people who consider as wise and also respected men, uh, leading men of their tribes. Then he appointed them uh, to be the leaders over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Where did he learn it from? The father-in-law. Uh, let's turn to Exodus chapter 18, verse 19 to verse 23. Listen now to me. I will give you some advice, and may God be with you. You must be the people respect with representative before God and bring their dispute to Him. Teach them the degrees and law and show them the way to live and the duties they are to perform. But select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain, and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and ten. Have them serve as judges for the people at all times. But have, to, have them bring every difficult case to you. The simple case they, have de- they can decide themselves. They will make your Lord, that will make your Lord lighter because they will share it with you. If you do this and God so commands, you will be able to stand the strain and all these people will go home satisfied. <laughs> Amen. See, uh, thank God, I mean, Moses is a learner. Uh, that he humbled himself uh, to take up to took up the uh, the advice from uh, his father-in-law. I believe that God has sent his father-in-law Jethro uh, to minister to Moses, and Moses learned that lessons, and uh, how now he used that to deal with the new generation, uh, to appoint leaders, uh, a shared leadership. Uh, he started it how he used. Um, Joshua especially and also Aaron at the same time um, so this is how we should do our ministry in the church um, we as a priest uh, we will not stay here forever but you as a member of the Church of Good Samaritan you will be here like forever and ever and I pray that you will be faithful to this church uh, how um, is that you you can be part of this community building that uh, we uh, offer ourselves to be part of the training, uh, to be part of the discipleship training, uh, equipping how we try to evolve into as many as uh, ministry as possible. Uh, we try to evolve in some way, a small way or big way, uh, dealing with uh, church building, dealing with uh, ministry, uh, dealing with mission, dealing with welfare, uh, with the expertise, the talents, the gift that the Lord has deposited to you. It is time, I believe, God wants to raise us up uh, to be the leaders. So, uh, with this discipleship training, I strongly believe that the leadership group that we have at this moment, uh, God is doing some work and are transforming and also maturing us to be the leaders that will take up thousands, uh, hundreds, fifties and tens. Okay? Uh, so I want to encourage you to do that. Once this happens, I, be- I believe uh, what will uh, be the scenario for the church is that we will turn that what we call 2080 uh, phenomena, that scenario uh, around. Uh, no more like 20 people doing 80 people job in the church but it will be 100% all of us will come together all the 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 part of this body of Christ will function well and uh, function to the full 
that uh, we will uh, continue to surrender ourselves, humble ourselves before the Lord and let the Lord use us uh, either with this small issue or big issue. So there's always, there's a structure that, that the one who can handle the tents, they will solve the issue of the tents. One that cannot, they will bring it up to the fifties, to the hundreds, to the thousands, and to, well, of course, to Moses. Eh? So that is the way, because this will help Moses, actually. Uh, like the father-in-law says, stand the strain, and all these people will go home satisfied. All right? So because of that, I think uh, how Moses want to share that is not because of his, his lazy. Uh. Sometimes we think, eh, uh, pastor want to give everything to the people because they are lazy. No, I don't think so. Right? I trust Moses whereby he shared this leadership to them so that you now this group of people uh, can continue on uh, the ministry. Uh, Acts chapter 6 verse 3 to verse 7. Uh, what happened to that after the dis- dispute over the distribution of the food? Uh, verse 3. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. The proposal pleased the whole group. They choose Stephen, a man full of faith of the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, uh, Parmenas, and also Nicholas from Antioch, a convert of Judaism. They presented this man to the apostle who prayed and laid hand on them to them, so the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of the priests became obedient to the faith. Amen. It just showed that uh, we can do our ima- use our imagination. If the issue about the distribution of food uh, didn't solve at that time, that increased the number of disciples increased rapidly, and also the large number of priests became obedient to the faith. It might not happen <laughs> because we are bound and limited with the issue. So today, uh, we hope we will have that shared leadership in the church whereby a lot of you uh, can rise up and, uh, to serve the Lord. May I encourage you. None of us are born as uh, genius and know everything. We learn along the way. Uh, we learn uh, from experiences. Uh, we learn from teaching. We learn as God uh, guided us. So I want to encourage you uh, take up this challenge with faith. Uh, that's, we can step up to offer ourselves to be part of the leadership. That as we work together and uh, as we follow the, 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 the guidance of God, I believe both from the leaders during uh, Moses' time, uh, no, the first time, then the second time, the new generation, and even we look at another incident of Acts chapter 6, we can see the similarity between that and the issue. Uh, as they do this reality check, knowing that with the leaders alone, they cannot s- handle the, the load, the burden, then how they see that possible danger uh, if they do not solve the problem. As they know how to anticipate it, they come up with advice, come up with a uh, plan uh, that to see how to solve that problem, how to, uh, to anticipate that problem by giving up or share the leadership to others. Looking at the theme of discipleship training again, awaken the laity. If we can have more of the leaders rise up together, can you imagine the amount of force, amount of uh, ministry that we can have uh, as we serve together? Uh, in the kingdom of God. Amen. In uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to verse 13, it was he who gave some to be apostles, some of the to be prophets, some of the evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers 
to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Amen. There are terms that given by the law. All this leadership is appointment by God. The instruction how the Lord want to pick His people. Uh, his children to serve as uh, this serve as a leader uh, that will build up this community. You and I uh, can be part of it. I want to encourage you that as we come to the Lord and ask the Lord, uh, how can we be part of this the kingdom of God to put part of this community building? Uh, I always like that. The United States, the President of the United States mentioned about uh, who that I can uh, don't ask what the country uh, can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. So we should kind of break away from times that always as we come to the Lord ask for blessing, 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 ask for help, ask the Lord to, to, to bless us and so on. Uh, I think it's a time for us to change a little bit of our prayer lifestyle to ask Lord what can I give what how can I give and uh, in what way that I can be part of this community building okay? uh, so let us learn these lessons uh, from the book of Deuteronomy as Moses deliver the second law or the repeat the first law um, he started with dealing uh, of the leadership uh, issue that he get what the Lord had appointed to him, the 70 elders and uh, they work together and uh, serve and also you know, uh, to really getting the, the, the generations uh, into the promised land so today as our context uh, we can be part of this community building Alright, so let's all pray together and ask the Lord to continue to show us as we surrender ourselves and ask the Lord, uh, no, like Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for giving us that opportunity to be part of your kingdom uh, as we grow from our, as a disciple, that the journey I come to the point that uh, we need to take up challenge uh, as a leaders uh, to be uh, part of the leadership uh, who are going to build this community. Father, I pray uh, that you will open up that doors for all of us, O oh Lord. As we come to you, Lord, we want to humble and surrender ourselves to you. Lord, like Isaiah prayer again, that we want to pray this prayer here am I send me Lord we are willing and uh, come Lord as your Holy Spirit that fill us and continue to guide us Lord we are ready for the training for the equipping so that we can rise up and uh, to be the disciple that will actively build uh, the community according to your will. Father, we surrender all this into your hand. Bless us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.